Hey everybody, welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Peterson. Man, today I really want to dive into, um, this is going to be a good show just because I'm going to talk about um, my pains. So pain, This we're actually going to title this show from 97 to 82, WTF. <laughs> and so I got to, this is probably, I'm, I'm going to make this a two-part series because I want to make them short and I want to make some, some quick ones so you can kind of get this and then we'll move on to the next one for the next week. But um, I got to share with you my pain and it's in the pain stories. I think that hopefully you'll find that there's a lot of growth and, you know, what happens, you know, the real stuff that happens in multifamily investing. So, and, and we may only make it, this could be just one episode. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but... Um, I've got to set this story up and so you guys can really kind of understand the deal and what you go through and the emotions that you go through as a real estate, you know, multifamily investor. So, you know, I've owned this property. It's called Forestwood. It's in Slidell, Louisiana. Um, I bought it almost three years ago. We've owned it for three years. And, you know, we bought it for $3.6 million. I think we raised one point uh, six million dollars in capital, but man, it's been a amazing property. And when I say amazing, I mean it's cash flowed since day one. Like it was ninety one percent or eighty nine percent when we bought it, and then we quickly got it to ninety seven percent within like two months, and it didn't even require a whole hell of a lot of work, in our opinion. And we'd budgeted around four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in capital improvements, and you know we it was some roofs. We did some roofs, um, and you know we're doing the interiors were really nice. So actually, this property had got hit by a uh, hurricane. I mean, uh, yeah, a hurricane, and was flooded. And the downstairs, uh, because the downstairs was flooded, the whole property got remodeled on the inside. So. It was, I mean, they took the money and remodeled the whole interiors of the property, yet the outside still looked kind of tired, for lack of a better word, tired. And you know what tired looks like, you know, shrubberies are overgrown and, you know, it looks like it's not been painted in a long time. It just, it looks and and kind of feels like, eh, it may be not my favorite property, right? And when you, when you look at this property first, you're like, ooh, you're buying that? That looks like a dog. Until you went inside and you're like, wow, this is a really nice play. And so the play on this property was to um, really just fix up the exterior with the roofs and then go into the, uh, the outside paint. And that's what we've done. And um, we're actually just now getting on the paint job three years later. Well, why? Because... We're very methodical in our in our um, rehab, but th we actually wish. Now, looking back, I wish we would have painted the property a lot sooner. This is Corey Peterson's mistake. Um, one of the things we try to do when we're, we're running properties is we really try to not make it look like a construction zone. So we usually go from, you know, project, finish, complete, to next project, finish and complete, to next project. And... Um, every time we got ready to kind of do the paint, it was like raining a lot. So we just kind of kept postponing it. And so we've been running this property. There's this manager, his name's Terry. And Terry's been managing this property since day one. And, you know, he is, um, he looks like he could be a Louisiana native. Um, you know, it's the South and it's a little different type of person that runs in the south just saying and um, terry is from missouri um, more from the ozarks and i think he really enjoyed it a lot he liked he liked living there and you know when you have staff so typically when we buy a property we have um, our management company has a training uh process where we have pre-trained managers in training at all times and then we tap them and they get deployed to properties our managers live uh, on site 
And so they, you know, grab a U-Haul, move all their belongings, and they have a new home called the apartment that they're going to run. And, you know, we found that this is a very, very effective way to manage and uh, control properties. In fact, we do really, really good. And Terry uh, came in and did exactly that. He packed his U-Haul up from Missouri and drove to Louisiana uh, in Slidell, which is right next to a little bit northeast of uh, New Orleans. And he loved it. And you could tell that he loved it. And he, you know, soon knew all the residents' names. And this is about 100 and, uh, I think it's 102, maybe it's 102-unit yeah, complex. So it's not super big, but it's a decent size. And um, he knows everybody. In fact, you know, there was a couple small hurricane scares or, you know, whatever that goes, you know, they all go through Louisiana. Um, but, you know, he had the, everybody sandbagging. And, I mean, you could tell he really got along with his residents. And not only that, um, you know, we get we quickly get to 97% and like two month two into the deal. And I'm telling you, for three years, Terry never went below 97%. Now, that's a hell yeah, first of all. First of all, that's a hell yeah. Like, when you can do that and consistently at 97% and did, did and Terry, some months was 100%. Some months he was 100%. And I mean, I love it, man. When you're at 100%, you're getting all the juice, okay? You are making sure that the juice is worth the squeeze at 97, especially at 100, right? Um, 100 plus, just make sure you collect all the money, then you're good. <laughs> but, you know, Terry's just doing a phenomenal job, man. And I'm, you know, every month it's like, at a boy, at a boy, at a, you know, keep it up. And I'm telling you the communications to my investors, like, yeah, it's another great month at uh, Forest Wood Apartments, you know, profitable, making money, great. Uh, you know, this month's payday. And we're, we're just rolling along for like the last three years. And it's been easy. I mean, easy peasy, nothing hard. We're working our CapEx projects. We remodel the pool. Um, you know, we're starting to hide all the wire. We're actually prepping the property for the paint process now. Like, you know, there's sometimes when you buy properties, there's like a wire a thon. <laughs> you ever seen that? When there's like the cable guy decides he's going to really, you know, punk you and he wants to put cable everywhere and run cable all along the side of your buildings. And it's an eyesore, by the way. <laughs> it's an absolute eyesore. You buy this, you're like, what in the hell was the cable? What were they doing? And we typically will try to do all that. We'll take conduit and put all those wires in conduit and then run it up one spot. And be really, you know, strategic on how we run wires. Wires on properties, running around and hanging on properties is just not a good idea. It's, it looks, it looks ugly. So we, you know, we fixed it, and we're just doing all these things. And I mean, it really is working well. Until, until Terry decides that man, he's getting older, he's tired. You know, the stress of having to. Um, and we, we, we demand a lot from our, our managers. We, we absolutely do. Like if you're not demanding a lot from your managers, you're probably doing it wrong, doing it wrong. And you know, the goal is that 97%, hundred percent, right? That's the goal. And it's consistently like that. And we consistently like the one thing I love, one of my favorite quotes is our tenants expect rents to go up. And I'm telling you, we never disappoint them, ever, ever. Even if it's like 10 bucks, we're gonna raise the rents. That is the, the only way you grow your NOI year over year over year, you've got to raise rents. And even if it's just a small, a little you know, bit of it, but you got to do it and you've got to do it consistently. And so we're going along, but so Terry finally, he's. The stress of being the apartment manager is finally just kind of, it's ran its course and he's just ready to do something new. In fact, his doctor told him, his doctor, he went to see his doctor and his doctor said, hey, listen, Corey, you're Terry. Um, man, you just need a little, a little bit less stressful environment. So, I mean, when you get when you get that news, what else, I mean, what are you gonna do? 
you know, and, and dude, he left on great terms and it was just a very copacetic. I mean, it was, I mean, I have nothing but respect. I mean, Terry and his wife is really Terry and his wife, husband and wife team. I mean, they loved on my property. And this is, this is about people guys. We're believe it or not in this apartment world that we're in. It's not about dollars. You think it's about dollars, but it's not about dollars. It's about people. It's, it's truly because the people that you hire and put in your properties to run them are so important as to the people that actually come in and live in your community. We're in the people business. We hire great people to run and manage great people, you know, and give them a home. And by the way, it's not their unit or their uh, tenant or, or, you know, their spot. It's their home. And when you come at it from that kind of level and that angle, man, it really becomes um, a very personal, private thing. Well, so Terry, you know, Terry's leaving. Terry gives us notice and, hey, guys, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be out. We hate it. We're trying to keep him. But he's like, guys, you know, I just, um, I, you know, I, doctor said that it's probably not good for me. And, and, you know, and what can you say to that? Nothing except thank you very much. You've done a wonderful, wonderful job. And I've really appreciated working with you. That's all you can say. And so Terry leaves. And so now we have, you know, we, we find what we think and identify what we think is the next right manager to go to the property and we, we deploy, right? They deploy and they're get trained by, you know, they're already, uh, the, you know, him and Terry kind of work for about two weeks together, kind of get, get everything going. And, you know, then the new manager's all by himself. We will not name the manager a new manager because he doesn't have a name at this point. <laughs> because his time was short lived. And, but here's what happens. And guys, here I'm sitting telling you this as a seasoned operator. Let me tell you what happens. So just like the title of this one series says is that, yeah, we went from 97% and within two months. So the first month we go from 97% to like 91 or like right at 90. Now, after, for our process, in, at 95, when you get to 95% or better, you're finally a green property. Anything below 95%, so really it's 96%, you're green. At 95%, you are, well, 95% you're green. 94%, you're pink. You're pink. And so we went from a green property to a pink property in the matter of one month. And, you know, that's, that's not good. That's, that's really not good. And it really was because there was not a lot of renewals, right? Right. So Terry had a track record of getting about 65% plus renewals every time. I mean, he maintained that average consistently guys, the way you make lots of money in this business is that renewal retention rate. If it's high, if it's 65% plus, Man, that is how you make a crap ton of money in this business. Because when you don't have to go in there and turn the unit, do all the work that's required to turn the units, man, it is way more profitable to keep that tenant in there another year and give him that $10 or $15 rent bump. That's very, very profitable. You, if you can do you know, your tenants two to three years at a time like that, man, you're doing, that's the, that is the formula. And so Terry's hitting it, man. And as soon as the new manager comes in, now the new manager probably is not a country boy like Terry. And we're kind of in the South. And you you kind of got to be a little bit more, I don't know, for the better word, country. And it's just not. And what really happens is the new manager comes in there with his wife and she doesn't really like Louisiana. Now, that immediately, so we go in the first month from 97 to 90. It's kind of like WTF, hold on. I mean, we're like, I mean, 
if there was like a wee wee the sirens going on, like we are now saying, whoa, what's up? And I'm now as the operator owner of the property, this is always delayed information for Corey Peterson. I get it at the end of the month on my reports because I run my properties from my financial reports. That's the way I'm supposed to do it. I don't try to micromanage my management company, but you know, I you know, but you got to pay attention. So once something hits your radar, like from 97 to 90, whoop, okay, you're on my radar now. I'm watching and I'm waiting to see what's going to happen the next month. Because I'm like, well, it's the new manager. He's got to get in, you know, he's accustomed to new stuff and he's got a lot of things he's got to kind of, um, you know, you got to get your bearings for a little bit. It takes a little time. Well, the next month happens. And guess what? <laughs> We go to 82%. Oh, gosh. It hurts me so bad to have to tell you this, guys. I mean, oh, 82%. From 97, three years running to go to 82%. I mean, listen, we have screwed up. We, we, we have effed up something right now. And I'm, the next month when I get this report, I mean, honestly, it's like, dude, um, you know, hey, something's, this is, this is just crazy. And so it happens. Um, but I really want to, want to talk to you about is the, the talk that I have with my management company. Because now at the first report, I'm like, okay, well, it's an anomaly. It's, it's what, you know. And then when it happens again, I mean, that's an immediate phone call. Like when it goes to 82%, the phone has been picked up and now I'm having real conversations with my management company. So here's what that management co that call goes like. And by the way, I mean, you know, I feel like I have a great management company. I really do. They manage all my properties. And for the most part, I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty, most of our properties are 97, 98% occupied. So this is, and so then we have to have this, guys, what, what are we doing right now? They're like, Corey, we're on it. We already know this. We have already replaced this manager. Okay. So I'm like, well, what happened? And that's where I got the story of, um, you know, they went there. They, he didn't like it. He's new. And, you know, his wife didn't like it. And it's just not the right fit. And so, okay. I understand that. And so here... So now we go another month, right? Let's let's fast forward. You know, we have we're now three months into this thing, three months into this thing. <laughs> the next month, eighty six percent. Oh, improvement, improvement. And so at that point, I'm like, okay, well, all right, we're trending back the other way. That's good. Looks like we're starting to, to you know, Corey, we we feel like we fixed the problem. Um, you know, management companies, you know, we're communicating, we're, we're communicating almost not weekly at this point, but probably every other week. And, you know, what I've learned is you've got to be, so write this down, underline it, put it in your brain, um, cement it there. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Okay. The squeaky wheel gets the grease, no matter what, every time, amen. And when you as an owner operator feel like there's things going wrong with your property, be a squeaky will. My only, um, and, and I, I'm going to tell you right now, I wasn't squeaky enough. I should have been way more squeakier in the very beginning. I should have been way more squeakier and maybe I'm just too nice of a guy, but I'm telling you from my pain, my hindsight is, and I know this, I know to be a squeaky will. I'm usually a squeaky will. I'm more like probably a bear that likes in hibernation until you wake me. <laughs> and then I'm a squeaky bear. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's, that's probably what really happened is I turned into a big bear. And I, you know, at this point it's like, guys, this is not acceptable, right? I need to fix 86% is not good enough. And like, what are we doing? So let's fast forward another month. Now I'm four months into it. It goes back to 82. Now at 82, when we go back down from 86 to 82, 
Um, this is when I now I'm I'm just upset. Okay, there's no better way to say it, except now I'm we are now communicating almost every day. I'm ta I'm calling the um, manager of the property. I'm inserting myself into the you know and management companies hate this right but i don't care like it's my money it's my investors capital like i owe it to them now believe it or not so we run this probably for three years at 80 percent, we're making money like i'm profitable because we've owned it we've been raising rents for a while but listen we're not as profitable as we should be not as profitable as we should be and listen i just owe it to my capital to be i mean to hound the crap out of this and i did and I, and I have been. And so those conversations are not, you know, they're not mean or mean spirited, but it comes from the point of guys, we just got to fix the problem. What are we doing exactly? And putting, being that squeaky, constant squeaky will talking about, you know, what are you doing for advertising? How many times is the manager getting off his seat? Is he going into businesses? How is he fixing the problem? We have an immediate problem with occupancy. Um, this property has a history and your management company will tend to give you a lot of excuses. Well, Corey, the property's not painted. If it was painted, we could, nope, 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 no, 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 not even, hey, it's not been painted for three years. Terry kept it in 97. It's not the paint, guys. It's not the paint, right? It's probably the people. I bet you it's probably the people. Maybe we need to put some more pressure on the people. We need our managers to go work, 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 right? They've got to go out and find the tenants that's the job period amen that's the job and so i mean i really just i'm hounding this hounding this uh, weekly some weekly conversations um giving them a little bit of space but i am i'm absolutely a squeaky squeaky will and everybody feels it everybody in my management company feels it at this point now you have to be this way, guys. I, I hate to say it, but you have to be, I you know, I try to be a nice guy most of the time. I'm trying to be a nice guy most of the time. But if you're the nice guy and you don't have high standards and people think that, well, you know, it'll be, it's all right, it's all right. That owner's not going to care. Then you'll get that. You'll get that. But if you're the owner that's, oh, what's up with this? What's up with that? What's up with this? And I'm not saying you got to micromanage. I don't micromanage. But man, once you go past that line, now I am paying attention, man. It's like your kids. You know, you trust your kids till they, 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 they pull one over and then you're like, oh, I'm woke. <laughs> My eyes are wide open. And at that point in time, they, you know, like everything becomes real, real, real quick. And so, I mean, I'm, it's just that analogy that you're, you're now very much in that, when it was status quo, 97%. I'm in, I'm, I'm happy. I'm in never, I mean, I'm on sunsets and palm trees, but when there's an immediate problem, it's like all hands on deck. It becomes, you know, the focus of you know, laser beam focus. And so once I put that kind of pressure and really, what are we doing exactly? Are we, are we increasing our, you know, cause they're like, well, we've not, you know, nothing changed. Like they didn't put any more spending in the advertising. They weren't trying to do anything different except, oh, we're just going to try to, you know, be better. Well, no, no, we don't need to do that. We need to actually do some stuff. Maybe we need to look at our marketing. What are we doing? Are we doing a direct mail? What do we need to do to get more tenants in the door? We need to do a blitz, guys, blitz. And so we did. And so I'm proud to finally, like, on the fifth month, on the fifth month, <laughs> now we're finally at 90%. Okay. We've just become a pink property from red to pink at 90%. We become pink. Um, and we, I believe we have fixed the trend and we will, we will, um, by next month, we should be like 95. And then next month, probably 97. We're back back into the, the, the flow that we expect. And so now why do I tell you this story? Why do I think it's important that you hear these types of stories? Because this is the real stuff that goes on in apartment life. It's not all sunsets and palm trees, my friends. Sometimes, uh, you know, it gets a little, the ship lose, it gets off course. And 
man, it's it's in those course corrections where, man, that's that can make and break you. And you've got to stay calm. And you just got, you know, but you've got to let everybody know that who is in charge. Who's in charge? It's you, the owner. No one's going to care about your property more than you, the owner, and because you have your investors' hearts and minds uh, on your mind. And that's really what, you know, what it's about. And so as, you know, we, we went through that process. Now, let's talk about communication. Communication to your investors. Now, my investors understood me the whole time through. Man, I always say, man, you don't report good news or bad news. You just report the news, the news. And then you always give, if, if it's the news is like, hey, here's where at 97% all of a sudden to 90 or uh, no, 92 or 91 or whatever it was, I just said. Um, the news is, hey, man, Terry left, right? Here's what's going on. We got a new manager in transition, right? The next month, 82. Guys, we have, um, we failed, right? It really, it's that simple. We hired the wrong person for the job. It is very apparent in the numbers. Here's what we're going to do to fix it. And, um, you know, this is not normal, uh, you know, trending, but we'll, we're going to fix it, we're going to fix it. You know, we see a little bit of uh, movement. And we go to 86. All right, hey, we're training the right way. It looks like, you know, I think we've got it on. And we went to 82. It was like, all right, <laughs> guys, here's what I'm, I have inserted myself fully into the project of, um, you know, and we're doing specifically X, Y, we're, we're marketing this, we're doing that. I believe that we're going to, you know, we do we do now, the, the, the manager is now, you know, seated into the spot, likes it, he's doing well. Um, I'm looking at the, you know, uh, the show cards that, you know, the people that show up and, uh, you know, I'm looking at his traffic. Everything seems to be working in the right direction. We're getting our renewals again. I think we found the right person. We're increasing marketing. Um, you know, they went there just really a lot more detailed conversation. And, you know, it's really just, I mean, honestly, you don't even have to be that detailed. It's just let them know that you're watching, you're paying attention. And like, and here's what we're going to do. And so it's really nice when then you finally get to say, guys, we are back to a pink property. We're at 90%. And everybody's like, ah, good job. Good job. Thanks a lot. Glad we, glad we got out of that crap. Right. <laughs> and so I, what I find is that your investors, um, if you don't make it good news or bad news, you just make it the news. And, you know, and, and just let know that you're, you're paying attention, that you're working with, you know, you're being the chief of the boat and that you are making, uh, that you're, you know, paying attention to the numbers, paying attention to your management company in active communication and that you're going to ultimately solve the problem. And that's really what they believe. They believe your money believed in you in the beginning when they gave you the money. They, they did. They, they absolutely did in your process where they wouldn't give you the money. No one gives money to people they don't feel like they trust. So that's what happened. And so is it a good, um, now, now this actually makes a good conversation piece because, um, you know, we have payments coming out and listen, we just in this month just got it right. I mean, that email just went out and that email went out last night and I've already got responses from some of my investors. And so, uh, you know, why is it important to share with it? Because guys, this is the stuff that happens. It happens all the time. And even to a seasoned property, seasoned operator, um, and a seasoned management company, things happen. People, you know, it's people. We're in the people business. And sometimes you got to match the right people to the property. And, you know, it's, it's sometimes a little ballet. And, um, but what you got to make sure that you do is you don't freak out that you pay attention and then you lead, you lead your team to prosperity and you do it with calmness, with focus, determination, sure will and grit and letting them know that, listen, we are going to fix the problem and then you go fix it. And when you get to fix it, you look like the hero again, man. Good job, Corey. Great. Glad that we're back on track, you know, and it just shows your leadership skills. 
And because that's what happens in life. Things don't always go as planned. Most of the times, things go sideways. And that's just par for the course. That is the job of being a multifamily investor, being an operator, is really the ability to solve problems and to be resourceful. And those two things will, will carry you a long, long way. Guys, I think we only have to make this one segment, not two. I think I've got pretty much clearly the whole um, from 97 to 82 WTF. And hopefully you guys have really enjoyed this podcast. You know, um, we're really trying to grow this podcast. If you're not sharing this podcast with somebody, you know, do me a favor. Go out today. And when you're talking into the people that, that matter, the, the multifamily people that you come in contact with, let them know about this podcast. Let them know that there's a real source of good information that tells you the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, we really do really appreciate it. Um, you know, I even going to say there was a comment um, I got in iTunes that says, stop interrupt, interrupting the guest. And, uh, you know, sometimes I forget that I do, you know, that I know I, I do this. And I'm like, hey, time out, time out. And um, I'm going to be more mindful of that. I listen, I want to have a great podcast. And hey, if I'm, you know, it was a one star review. And it was like, man. Ah. But then I thought about it. And I'm like, man, I did interrupt that guy. And this is Michael Becker. And Michael, sorry, Michael, I interrupted you like three times. <laughs> but uh, I will. I'll be my. I'll be more mindful of that. I, I want guests to you know not get interrupted. I hate it when I get interrupted too. So uh, maybe I'll wait for the pause and then we'll we'll recap. And the reason I do that sometimes is, man, I want. I don't want you guys to miss the the real big points. But maybe I should just let them get their points out. Anyways, um, at the end of the day, I just I love doing this podcast. It's one of the. It's one of my favorite things to do, is to share my stories. And the stories of other investors out there as they go along the journey. You know, at the end of the day, I want everybody to become a cash flow creator, to live that sunsets and palm trees life, to have money coming in time and time again for work done once. It is an amazing thing to do and experience. It, listen, it's changed my life. And I know multifamily investing in apartments can change your life too. Guys, if you believe it, you can achieve it. Your paradise is possible.